So this week, my wife and I have been at District Council, which is our annual statewide business meeting. And we heard a message last night that just blew me away. And I just really want to be able to share it with you. Talking about Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. If you look back at Judges chapter 5 and 6, it tells the well-known story of Joshua and the Hebrew armies fighting the Battle of Jericho. And how they get this message from God. And each day they go out and they march around the city. And they do this for six days. And then on the seventh day, they all march around the city seven times. And then look up at the walls and give a great shout. And the walls come crashing down. And most of us who've been in the church for any time at all are very familiar with the story of the Battle of Jericho. And what an incredible miracle it is. But a lot of times we don't necessarily look at what it must have been like to actually be part of the battle and part of that group. And last night it, it was very interesting listening because he pointed out something I had never realized. And I actually went back and dug into Joshua chapters 5 and 6 and realized that God tells Joshua what to do. God tells Joshua the battle plan. But nowhere in here does it say that Joshua tells the people what the plan is. It says that every day Joshua gets them all up, gets everybody put together, gets the priests together with the Ark of the Covenant, and has them go marching around the city. And then at the end of the march, they all head back to camp and they just stop. Nowhere in here does it say that Joshua tells them, hey, we're going to do this each day. And then at the end, it's going to come together. He just says, get up and march. So the people are doing this, more than likely, completely unaware of why they're doing it. Maybe they're thinking, hey, we're going to intimidate the people. Maybe we're going to scare them. Maybe they'll just surrender. And, you know, the first couple days or so, they're out there marching. and Okay, we'll get to do this and we're going to win. And, and probably by day four, they're kind of sitting there going, okay, we've done this already. Why are we doing this again? Is something supposed to happen? And every day they're out there marching some more. By day six, they're probably a little frustrated, irritated, and upset. Okay, here we are going around in circles one more time and nothing's happening. What's the deal? What's up with Joshua? Why is he got us doing this? We're not getting anywhere. We're not accomplishing anything. And after six days, and especially by the seventh one, he says, okay, we're going to march seven times today. You know what? I'm getting really tired of this dude. I'm getting tired of everything that's going on. What a waste. He's a goofus who doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, sure, he's heard from God, and we're supposed to walk in circles. Six days worth, and it seems silly and a waste of time and worthless, and Joshua is really beginning to look stupid, and the people are getting upset, and nothing's happening. Halfway through the seventh day, nothing's happening. And I'm even trying to imagine Joshua. Joshua has heard from God, but at the same time, somewhere in the back of his mind, he's got to be going, okay, are we going to see something? At least like some cracks in the walls or some sign? And there's nothing. And now at the time that we're being told this, he's preaching to a bunch of pastors and a bunch of preachers but this applies to many of us in our lives we're people who have given our lives to do a work that god has called us to do to serve people to help people see the truth and the way things are and hopefully change lives to see people delivered to see communities be blessed and changed and impacted to see our churches grow and and a lot of times we don't see anything and in fact one of the hard things about ministry is you see a lot of people who hear the truth and they respond a little bit and then they turn around and walk away and reject it. And they go on into other things. And maybe what you're doing in your life, you're doing what you know that you were supposed to do. You've taken this job because you knew it was the right thing or you've moved to this place because you know it was what you were supposed to do and it's not working. And things are not coming together and you know it's what you're supposed to be doing, but it's just not happening and you're frustrated and, and what is going on? You feel like you're in that sixth day or the beginning of the seventh. You feel like you're in that sixth day or the beginning of the seventh 
and you're frustrated. Come on, God, what on earth is the deal? I feel like you've led me here to do this, and it's not coming together. And your friends and your family and the ones who are supposed to be supporting you are all kind of going, look, that's not it. Change your mind. Change your course. Worse yet are the ones that you think are your friends and they're talking about you and calling you things like failure, waste, worthless. It, it's tough when, say, you go out to eat and you hear the people at the table next to you going, can you believe that guy? Why are they still doing it? Why haven't they figured it out yet and moved on? And you're going... I know God's called me to do this, but why isn't it happening? I'll tell you, a lot of pastors go through this. A lot of ministers, especially those of us who have purposely chosen to go to a place that may not pay much. And believe it or not, that's 60% of pastors out there. And we sacrifice so much and give up so much, and it feels like sometimes there's just not much happening. Now, I want to be clear on one thing. This is not intended for people who are doing what you know you're not supposed to be doing. If you are in a wrong relationship, you've just jumped into a relationship with somebody, and maybe you're living with somebody you shouldn't be living with or doing other things, maybe you're struggling with drugs or alcohol or you've just been a jerk or you're involved in other things you know that you shouldn't be doing and you know that God doesn't want you to do. This isn't saying that's okay. Stop it. Turn yourself around, get what you're supposed to be doing. I asked a, a young lady the other day who was involved in her third engagement in two years. Why do you keep jumping in the dumpster and swimming among the garbage and then be surprised that it stinks? Get out of the dumpster and get to where you're supposed to be and you might find it gets better. But there are a lot of times that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And it's hard. And come on, God, where are we going to see the breakthrough? And his word is to hold on, to keep going. When God has called you to do something, when he's asked you to do something, when God has given you a true burden to serve and to help and to change the lives of other people, and you don't see it happening, hold on, because there will come a point after 12 and a half times around, all of a sudden you're on that last time around the city where you're at that point where you think nothing's going to happen. This has been a waste of time. And then you stop and God shouts. And God says, I have given you the city. And then the walls come down. Then finally victory comes. Then after all the struggles and the failures and the waste and things that haven't gone the way they should and all the criticism and backbiting, then victory comes. My encouragement to you is the same encouragement I received last night. That when it seems dark and like you're wasting your time and you're not going anywhere and nothing's happening, but you know that God has called you, keep going. Hold on. Keep reaching out to him. Keep trusting him and that word and direction that he gave you. And eventually, the walls will come down and he will give you that city. Hold on and keep following him. And he will see you through it. If you need to see the scriptures again, it's Joshua chapter 5, starting off at verse 13 and then all the way through chapter 6. Read it carefully, take inspiration, and then let God speak to you and let him direct you to where he wants you to go. God bless.